What's up, everyone? How's it going? Anthropic just released a, an analysis of over 500,000 conversations with Claude to show us where software development is going. So we'll jump into this. So this is Anthropic's economic index, AI's impact on software development. So how LLMs are affecting software development, the software development industry, so on and so forth. So just released a couple of weeks ago. So Anthropic is always putting out these, I think these really great blog posts related to the impact of and usage of their models, which I think is really awesome. And so this is really focused specifically on software development use cases though. So 500,000 coding related interactions with Claude AI and Claude code. Something to note is that this doesn't include team or enterprise or API usage. So a little skewed in that way, which they do point out themselves later. So three quick overviews. Coding agent is used for more automation. So if you're not familiar, Cloud Code is a agent you can interact with uh, via the terminal to do a bunch of different tasks for you. So 79% 70, of conversations with Cloud Code were identified as automation, where AI does the whole thing rather than augmentation, where you collaborate. So collaborating could be going back and forth and proofreading an article. Automation could be, hey, build this thing for me and give it to me. Um, and only 49% of the conversations on Claude AI were, were automation, which is, you would kind of expect uh, the Claude code kind of coding agent has more capabilities to go kind of end to end. Um, and I think we'll see more of that, especially as it gets introduced into the web interface. Uh, coders commonly use AI to build user facing apps. So yeah, the web development languages are the most popular programming languages, which we'll dive into a little bit further. They go on to say that, you know, this suggests that uh, jobs that uh, center on making simple apps and user interfaces may face disruption first, uh, purely uh, in contrast to backend work. I don't think this is exactly true. Um, I don't think there are jobs that just focus on really making simple applications and also making simple applications is, is a challenge in, in UI and UX. Uh, so I, I would disagree with this. I think it makes it easier to kind of spin things up quicker and prototype quicker. And I think really is an augmentation tool for front-end developers or, or designers. I think that actually the, the role of design becomes more important and that's what interfaces are. And then it's something you would expect startups are using cloud code more than enterprises. So 33% of conversations with cloud code are startup related. I don't think they go into how they define that, but that would be an interesting thing to, to, to talk about. Um, only 13%. So a classic, you know, early adoption, uh, usually smaller companies. So how did they actually analyze these conversations? Pretty interesting. So 500,000 uh, cloud interactions, they used their privacy preserving tool called Clio, which I jumped into and checked out. Both these articles will be linked below. So Clio is their privacy preserving analysis tool. And it's basically like a four step process, um, but it's a bottoms up discovery patterns by distilling conversations into abstracted, understandable topic clusters. Uh, without like actually seeing who the person is actually having the conversation. Data is anonymized, aggregated at a higher level, um, and the clusters are visible to human analysts. So basically, it starts with a conversation. That conversation turns into facets, which has basically like extracting metadata, like how long the conversation was, a language, you know, a general summary. And then many facets get pushed into clusters, which are just related. Um, you know, related based on the metadata or the summaries. Um, and then those clusters are made into hierarchical clusters. And then that's when it's uh, visible to the analyst. So again, I think it's really great that they put out this information about how this is done. Let's move on. How do developers interact with Claude? Again, we saw this before, 79% of conversations involve some form of automation on Claude code versus 49 on Claude AI. We split automation and augmentation to several subtypes uh, and this feedback loop one, which I think is the most popular, at least in my use case. Um, so that's where the cloud will do something autonomously with the help with the help of human, human validation. Um, so maybe like, you know, you send an error back to the to the AI to then go and fix it. Um, and that was twice as common in cloud code, again, pretty typical versus cloud AI. You know, I guess with cloud AI, you could use their artifacts to be kind of iterating on some application of some sort. Um, but definitely, it's gonna be much more likely than cloud code that you're working on some coding related thing. And there's always errors that will pop up there. Uh, all the patterns of augmentation, including learning where the user acquired knowledge from the AI were substantially lower on cloud code than AI. So yeah, all the like the learning type of, you know, conversations were much more likely in cloud AI, which makes sense in cloud code. You're probably more just trying to get something specifically done versus exploring. 
So distribution of uh, automation, augmented behavior on cloud code and AI. So automation, we see cloud code much bigger comparatively. And then uh, where's the learning one? Yeah, so augmentation, big chunk is learning, uh, task iteration, which they don't really define, but yeah, learning and kind of discovery, I'd say is much bigger in cloud AI, which makes a lot of sense. Importantly, our results show that even within automation, humans are still very often involved. The feedback loop, which we talked about before, uh, require your input. Even if it's just you're sending the errors back, it's like a back and forth versus like zero shotting something and getting something out on the other end. And we talked about this a little bit before, but what are people building? J JavaScript, TypeScript, very popular. HTML, CSS are another kind of big ones here. And so we could look at the, the breakdown. Um, we do, they do programming languages next. Yeah. Um, so they do group the coding into use cases, um, software architecture and code design, I think is a pretty big catch all. Um, you obviously see a lot of UI UX, um, you see not a lot of like algorithm stuff, which I think that like pretty much tells the story of what people are using these things for, for the most part, um, a lot of front end stuff at the moment, maybe exploring different types of layouts, um, versus like doing like really tough, like algorithmic stuff. Top programming languages, which we're just we're talking about. Again, a lot of JavaScript, a lot of HTML, a lot of CSS, a lot of Python, because it's both like a something you can build with and something you can do data analysis with. So that makes a lot of sense too. Um, it's pretty evenly like distributed. There isn't like one that really dominates in either. Um, you see, yeah, like this is basically even across the board. You see more uh, TypeScript and Cloud Code versus Cloud AI, which is something you probably expect. Yeah, UI UX, web app. So again, front end stuff, kind of like vibe Cody related type things. Uh, do, do, do. We talked about that already. I thought this was interesting as well. So who is using uh, Cloud for Coding? So they broke it down into the types of projects. Um, and here's where we get into like the enterprise versus startup stuff, but personal projects, you see a lot of that. Um, so and like that's a lot of my use case as well of just like doing things with the AI to go faster. And you see a lot of that in both cloud code and cloud AI. Then you see a big kind of discrepancy here. A lot of like early stage companies adopting cloud code, a coding agent versus um, cloud AI. These are still like high, higher numbers, I would say. Um, enterprise work pretty tightly bound. Open source coursework is lower than I would have guessed. Um, so yeah, startups ad adopted earlier, a like startup account for 33% of Claude code conversations, which is 20% higher than Claude uh, AI usage. Uh, to do, in addition, using students, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, individuals, not just businesses, uh, businesses are um, significant adopters of coding assistance tools. So yeah, you see that with students, you see that with open source projects. And yeah, this is a classic kind of pattern when new technology comes out is that smaller individuals or smaller companies adopt it first. Limitations, we talked about this before, um, but yeah, no team enterprise or API um, conversations were analyzed here. Boundary between automation and augmentation is, is blurred, which makes a lot of sense. Um, even that feedback loop of, hey, I got this error, fix it. You know, I'm not really doing much there. Um, and so I think this is a really good kind of analysis of where we're at. Oh, there was one supplementary thing that looked cool here. Um, so compared our results for software related automation uh, to ones that did not involve software. So maybe you're just like writing or things along those lines. And that's what this chart represents here. Uh, AI assisted coding currently requires a lot of human reviewing. It's a lot of back and forth uh, compared to non coding tasks where Claude does the bulk of the work. So if we look at software versus non software, big difference in the feedback loop versus in non software, there's usually not as much. So Again, that's just representative of kind of generally how software has always been. It's like very iterative and like for non-software tasks, it might be easier to just one shot something. And so this is a really good kind of update about where things are at, uh, very clear data here and hope Anthropic continues to kind of push things out in this way. I don't think the software development job is going anywhere anytime soon. I think there's going to be 10 times more code written versus like one tenth of the, the developers. And so I think there's just going to be 10 X of everything. So not to do me yet. Um, but yeah, this was a lot of fun to get into. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you in the next one.